Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to dinner is gonna be a little late tonight. We're a couple of minutes late, but we are worth the wait today. We, mm. it's, it's part of the theme. We're a couple of minutes late to starting for dinner's gonna be a little late tonight. I'm, I'm always late. This is amazing that I'm usually prepared and ready for this. I asked my jazzercise class, if class starts at 9.15, that means it starts at 9.20. So well, you, are, anyway. you are incredibly organized. So I appreciate you for that. Thank you. I am. It's my OCD, ADD, whatever. <laughs> All right, Jen, what are we doing today? So um, today, I, I have to tell you, I am obsessed right now with the flavors of Mediterranean. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's the season or this time of year or the fact that I, I feel like it's somehow um, medicinal for protecting me from the COVID. But all those Mediterranean spices, those Greek flavors, um, those Middle Eastern flavors and uh, have, have just really been appealing to me. So a couple of weeks ago, we made that beautiful um, rack of lamb with Moroccan spices and it just got me on this roll. So I've been making like Turkish food and Indian food and all kinds of things. And so that inspired us for today to make this delicious um, gyro sandwich with pita and it's chicken gyro with a really delicious tangy lemony sour cream sauce and some fresh vegetables. So it's super easy to make. It comes together very, very easily. It's actually a very affordable if you're on a budget and um, our whole family loves it. And one of the other things I love about this recipe is that all of the elements of it keep. So you can prepare it all and then put it in the refrigerator and it can last and be eaten over multiple days as leftovers. And we love leftovers, don't we, Patty? I love leftovers. I love leftovers. In my family, we have leftover Monday because I like to cook a lot on the weekends. And my husband now knows leftover Monday. What are we gonna have? Something out of the refrigerator. So I'm excited. I have never made euros myself. I love them. I have a fun origin story about one of my favorite euro experiences, which I will share with you in the next half hour. Um, and one of the things I was thinking about those Mediterranean spices, John, is, you know, I feel like they add so much flavor and depth and freshness and excitement to a meal, but they don't weigh it down. They don't weigh it down with a lot of calories, with a lot of rich ingredients. So, and I, again, like the lemon and the tanginess with this sauce, I, I'm super excited to try this today. Awesome. Well, first let's recap what we made last week. Um, right. We made my mom's Italian meatball recipe that was passed down through the generations of my family. And evidently it was quite popular because that show has been viewed a lot and that recipe has been downloaded more than any of the others that we've had in the show so far. So thank you, whomever is enjoying my mom's recipe for meatballs. Um, it is quite delicious. And that was me um, sharing with you, the world, our family's secret Italian recipe, um, all the way back from Sicily. So um, enjoy it. And if you want to look for it, it's at twodadswithbaggage.com. Um, that recipe is there. I am. Um, so we, you know, we divided the recipe when we made it last week so that we had some that were finished and some that weren't. So guess we're having Friday night. I'm taking the other half of those meatballs out of the freezer, cooking them up. I can't wait. So that's almost like leftover Monday. I do have to cook them. But what a great, again, what a great recipe that you can make in advance and freeze and pull out when you have people over. And we so served good. it with a traditional spaghetti sauce, Italian sauce we call sugo in, in Italy and over pasta. But Patty, you can make those meatballs and serve them with pesto um, and, and a little sprinkle of cheese and maybe some pine nuts on top of pasta. Delicious. Yum, yum. Now we did have a question come up last week. It was actually like my question in my head. And that was about um, fresh herbs versus dried herbs. And what's the difference? So I did my research because <clears throat> I love my research. And I did have a question about it and John and I are still quite perplexed. So it says with, when you cook with herbs, the general rule of thumb is the ratio of fresh to dry 
And this, I want you guys to listen. You tell me if you agree with this. It says, because dried herbs are often more potent and concentrated than fresh herbs, you mean the correct ratio is one tablespoon of fresh herbs to one teaspoon of dried herbs. I personally think that's backwards. And as I said to John the other day, don't you think that a tablespoon of fresh rosemary is much stronger than a tablespoon of dried rosemary? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Okay, call me crazy. I don't know who out there, who's out there is gonna give us some feedback on this. But honestly, when I cook, I, I guess I do it backwards. So let us well, know. If, if it works for you and it tastes good, then it's right. That's right. That's all that matters. It is. And that's the thing about cooking that really um, people get so intimidated by because they feel like it has to, they have to follow the recipe exactly and it has to be exactly right or else they've messed up. Yeah. And the thing about cooking is all about nuance. It's all, it, it, unless you're baking, don't fuck around baking. It has to I be exact. That's why I don't bake. <laughs> but if it's regular cooking, it's just, you know, just relax. It's all about the combination of the flavors and however those come together is right for you. And as long as it tastes good, eat it, enjoy it. It's no big deal. Amen. Okay. All so right. let's get started. Um, we are making chicken gyro pita wraps with this tangy sour cream lemon sauce to go on top and fresh vegetables. And I have a funny story as Patty gets hers ready to show you. I have a funny story about gyros um, that I wrote about in the blog. You can read it later with the recipe. But when I first was introduced to gyros, I thought it was pronounced gyros. Um, Cause you know, gyroscope and you, those toys you play with as a kid. And I thought it was a gyro. And one of my friends at college kindly corrected me and said, no, it's a Greek word and it's pronounced gyro. And I learned the hard way by embarrassing myself in a crowd. And this was at UC Berkeley where I went to college and there were food trucks before food trucks were a thing. There were food trucks in Sproul Plaza at UC Berkeley. And we would line up at lunchtime to get all kinds of different things. And one of which was these delicious gyro sandwiches that I thought I had to try. Um, so anyway, I fell in love with them then. I've been eating them ever since. You know, I don't remember. I also went to UC Berkeley and I don't, I don't remember food trucks in Sproul Plaza, but you know why? Because at lunchtime, I would go home to my sorority to watch all my children. So every day, uh, uh, right. I was gonna, I was gonna suggest that maybe it was another reason why you didn't remember, but we won't go there. Yeah, that's what I was doing while I was watching all my children. Yeah, I figured. All right. Anyway, so um, let's get started, Patty. Why don't you talk a little bit about the marinade, and I'm gonna like talk a little bit about prepping the chicken. Okay. So sure. Sure. The marinade is super easy and one of the great hacks that John, since he is on this Mediterranean spice kick, um, is we were able to use the leftover rub from the lamb dish from Monarch Beach Resort. So it's just that and some olive, what's what's three tablespoons? Well, the, the portions are on the blog. Um, it's just the, 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 blah, <laughs> the, <laughs> Okay. Stuff. It's the spice stuff <laughs> and olive oil and salt and pepper, and that's it. And then you take this. So this is I. These are some hacks that I did this morning. You know, it's rough cutting an onion at seven thirty in the morning. I just want to go on record saying that I had to get myself psyched up. Anyway, so the recipe you just make your little marinade, and it's thick because it's the, a lot of a lot of the spices and some olive oil. And then what I do is you can put the chicken in the marinade and the onion in a bowl, a big bowl and mix it. But what I did was I just put this, the marinade in a little ramekin, put my chicken and my onions all sliced up in my baggie and then mixed it all together. And it was so fun. I got to do this for like 20 minutes. I loved it. Um, and then, but, but to backtrack a little bit, you do want to pound your chicken. John's going to talk about the chicken. Um, and I just, I'll share one thing with you. I know I have this reputation for saving things, and so does John. This is my grandmother's mallet. <laughs> I mean, they don't make them like this anymore, right? I can't even imagine how old this is, but it works. There it is. Yeah, yours looks much nicer. Mine literally looks like it's from like 1920. Mine so. was not my grandmother's. And yeah. so here's the thing, guys. 
Um, this recipe calls for thin um, breast of chicken, boneless breast of chicken. And so you can buy it from places like Purdue Farms where I'm a brand ambassador and they sell it to you um, cut as a filet, as thin slice, or you can get it is a full breast and pound it down. And that's what these meat mallets are for that they used to use a lot. And it has this edge. I don't know if you can see it, but it has this like kind of grid edge that sort of pounds into steaks to tenderize them. That is not the edge we're using <laughs> to pound the chicken. It's the flat edge that we're going to use to pound the chicken into a more flat um, kind of filet so that we can cook it quickly and easily and slice it quickly and easily. So um, it's really not that hard to do. So you just take your breast of chicken and I put it between two, like two slice, two pieces of wax paper because honestly, you kind of don't want it to splatter. I mean, raw chicken, you don't really want it to be all over your kitchen, but also you don't want the mallet to be hitting the chicken directly. Just, I don't know, maybe it's me, but I just put it between two pieces of uh, wax paper and then you just pound the hell out of it. <laughs> so it's I'm very doing that the stove top was especially noisy. So I'll move over to the countertop, which is where I normally do it, while Patty tells you a little bit about her marinade. All right. Well, I think I already, I think I already talked about the marinade. The, line, the marinade is super easy. It's, a, it's the herb, it's the spice rub, and olive oil, and salt and pepper. And like I said, you just, you can make it in a small little dish, put the chicken, and then you're going to slice an onion. Wow, that was so fast. How did you do that? Oh my goodness. No, I actually just did it. I did one, one was already done and one I just did. But wow. here's the thing. No one loves to look at raw chicken. So I'm going to go away with this <laughs> and put it in the bag. But I wanted you to see how easy it is to flatten that breast of chicken. And it's very therapeutic. Again, you know, I've talked about this before. Some of the things about, hey, Henry, um, Henry, don't you love it? Pounding stuff like, oh, such good stress relief. Um, so we're going to take the, Don's going to slice that onion into slices, super easy. What's the trick? Do you guys know the trick to keep your eyes from watering when you cut an onion? One, one thing that works really well, it's really, really hard for me to do. Keep your mouth closed. Really? Yeah. So here's my secret. I, hi, hi, Henry. Um, here, here's my secret. I um, wear contact lenses and for some reason, the contact lenses protect my eyes and I can cut onions all day long and I don't have any issue because the whatever it is that's like the fumes that are getting into your eyes to make you cry, I'm protected by. It. So when in doubt, get contact lenses. I tried them once for 30 seconds. I couldn't do it. Just freaked me out. So, okay. so now I've got the chicken in the bag. And I've sliced the onions. Aren't they pretty? All sliced up. I'm sticking them in there and I'm putting in my marinade. Now, this is the way we make the marinade. And um, um, first we're gonna make this paste. So here's my spice that Patty was just describing to you. Um, and, and what? I said I didn't describe it very well. <laughs> yeah, you did. So here's the deal guys. I'm just putting some olive oil in because I'm gonna make a paste to put as a marinade. But um, the um, the spice you can buy, uh, garam masala, um, you can buy at the store in the spice section. And like, we, like Patty said earlier, we also had some spice left over from what we made from scratch, which was a combination of spices. And I also listed that on the blog. So if you don't wanna buy garam masala or you can't find it, which is fine, you can also make a Mediterranean blend of spices really easily from what you might already have in your spice collection. So I've made this paste. I'm putting it in the bag with the chicken and I'm going to do just what Patty just did, which is to mix it all up. Okay. So Patty, why don't you start cooking your chicken while I do this? Oh, I'm cooking first. Okay. What? I thought we were making the sauce and the other stuff first. Well, you can start that and we can we can hop around. Okay. And then I've got it in my plastic bag, see, and I'm just I'm just mixing it together with my hands so that the spices mix with the onions and the chicken. 
Oh, John. Yes. Are we doing the pitas in the pan first, and then cooking uh, the chicken? In it? No, the pitas are after. Okay. Really? Yeah. Okay, let's do the pitas first. <laughs> I've been reviewing, oh, so here's something I was thinking about I wanted to tell you guys. You know, somebody asked me, why do you guys both cook the same thing at the same time? Well, because, um, like this is John's recipe. Sometimes we do a recipe that I'm familiar with. Sometimes we do a recipe that John's familiar with. So I'm making this for the first time today. So I think it's kind of fun. Like I'm asking questions. I've been looking at the recipe and asking questions and we tweaked it a little bit, putting a, you know, always, Another thing about cooking that I find is to piggyback on what John was saying, I'm always tweaking recipes. If I want to make something, I, I do research, I find like five recipes, I go through all the different ideas, and then I pick what I like the most. So as we were preparing for today's show, we were doing the same thing. Well, what if we did this? What if we added that? But um, I also don't like to use a lot of pans. And so the idea is you're gonna, we're going to do our pitas in the pan, then we take the pita out, then we use the same pan, cook chicken. Because here's a little fun fact you may not know. John's husband does the dishes. And Trent is the most amazing dishwasher in the world. You go over to your house for dinner, you're barely done with your dessert. The, the kitchen's spotless. I don't have that. My husband empties the dishwasher, and that's it. So I try to use as few dishes as possible. That's just my weird thing. So, John, are you still talking, or do I get to talk about wine or anything yet? Where are we? Are we going to do the pitas? No, let's do the pitas. Okay. So um, the trick in this in this um, in this recipe is to have the right pita wraps to wrap it in, and so it should be a round pita. We're gonna make basically a Greek taco. Is what we're gonna do. Um, so pretend this is a tortilla. We still have to heat it up, um, but it's thicker. It's breadier than a tortilla, um, and so it's like um, halfway between bread and tortilla. I guess is the way you put it. Um, but what's going to make it special for this recipe is we're going to rub it with a little bit of olive oil and then crisp it up in the frying pan, which gives it just a little added flavor and texture. And so we're not just putting the chicken and the vegetables into a raw pita. It also makes the pita a little less soggy when you put the sandwich pieces into the pita. It doesn't um, fall apart as easily. Because this is a juicy sandwich, it, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but you know, it gets a little messy, which is fine. Just get an extra napkin. So first, we rub the pita with some olive oil. And I've got this cute little brush that I use to do that with. Look, Patty's got one too. But you know, if you don't have one of those, it's no big deal. You can literally do it with your hand or a fork, but you just want to lightly brush the pita, see how I'm doing that? It's just like I'm just putting a very thin layer of olive oil on the top of the pita on both sides. And so the easiest way to do that is to put it on one side and then put it in the pan and put the olive oil on the second side while it's in the pan. So you're not getting it all over your hands. Bam, check mark. So that's what I'm doing. And then we're just gonna heat that pita up to crisp it on both sides. So we're gonna just put it at medium, medium, and we're just gonna do it for a couple minutes on either side to heat up the pita. And then that'll be the basis of the sandwich and it'll, it'll taste much more delicious than just eating the pita raw. Go figure, huh? I'm kind of pushing mine down because it's kind of concave. Oh, all right. So, so do I do that so it's like it gets... Well, so one of the things that's great about any dish is the sauce. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm a sauce junkie. So if it calls for like a little bit of sauce, I always put a lot of sauce because I just like it that way. It makes it messier. Oh, well. So I use an extra napkin. But if something calls for a little, I, and especially sauce, I'm always like doubling it because I know I'm going to put more on than, than the normal person or at least the recipe calls for. It always just makes it taste better, and especially when it's the sour cream sauce. That all the sour cream sauce is sour cream, lemon, and lemon rind, and it just gives it this like tangy, delicious, lemony flavor that is perfect with these spices. Look at that! What that, I do. that went quick. My first grilled pita. Very exciting. So you've never made gyros, right? No, but I've eaten them. Well, tell us your story. All right. Well, what are we doing while I'm telling the story? Um, 
Well, you can tell the story and, and look at camera, and I will make finish making my pita, um, and then we'll make the sauce. Okay. Okay, so my Euro story, um, my daughter lives in New York, and about five years ago, I went to visit her, and it was late at night, and we'd gone to see a show. We were gone to the theater and had some drinks and had one of those late cheese. <sighs> and so I had never done a food truck year in my birthday, but I had done them in New York. And it was wintertime, and it was cold. So we were all bundled up with our coats and our scarves and our leather gloves. So I went to the Euro truck, and I got my Euro you know where this is going, right? And I got into the back of the cab and it was too freaking cold to take my gloves off to eat my gyro, but I was hell bent on eating that gyro. So I ate the gyro with my black coach leather cashmine gloves. Yikes. Sharp that thing down and then smelled my gloves. And it oh. took me, it was so disgusting. I, obviously I couldn't wear the gloves the rest of the trip. I took them home in a Ziploc baggie and I am the laundry queen. And I did get the smell out of the gloves, but that's a hot tip. Don't wear gloves when you're eating gyros. Just, just go, just let it spill all over everywhere. But I, every, I can't even believe you attempted it. It was late at night, John. It was very late. <laughs> We were, you know, those munchies late at night where you're like, I'm going to eat this gyro at two in the morning. Me. In the back of the cab in New York back City. Yeah, back to Brooklyn, baby. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so why don't you show us how to make the sauce and I'll get the chicken ready to cook. All right. So the sauce, I love sour cream and I too love sauce. Let's, we're going to combine. It's a cup of sour cream. Yum, yum, yum. I feel like real euros, don't they use like yogurt? I don't really care for yogurt. Um, but I'm sure you could use yogurt. And then we're going to put in a tablespoon of lemon juice. Nice and easy. One tablespoon lemon juice. And then we do some lemon zest, I believe. Say Ah, uh, lemon, lemon zest. So I love zest stuff and I wanted to share with you my zester. This is an awesome zester. I got a zester for a shower gift when I got married 31 years ago next week. And it was an itty bitty little thing. And it zested, like the zesting space was about the size of a nickel. So this bad boy, this is a good one. So put in the zest. And then I think what else is in there? Just salt and pepper. So it's I have just a question for you on the, on the lemon zest. Do you zest the lemon and then cut the lemon and use the same lemon for the juice? You yes. do? Yes. Okay. I do that too, but I have a friend who says you can't do that. Um, and, like, and I don't know why, but he uses a, a separate lemon for the zest than the one he uses for juice, which makes no sense to me. That's just one extra lemon, isn't it? Yeah, I think maybe if you zest like vigorously and the lemon gets, maybe the rind gets too soft or something. I don't know. I I have always, I felt I was very clever today because I remembered to zest first, then cut my lemon, use my cool citrus juice, get out my lemon juice, and voila. So all we're putting in this sauce, oh, okay, put the wrong bowl. No, I see that. Is the sour cream, sour cream, a tablespoon of lemon juice, the lemon zest, and salt and sugar. So I finished my pita and I'm wrapping it in foil to keep it warm. Oh, that's what and I mean. You know what else will work is if you have a tortilla warmer, it will also work to put it in there. Um, but you want to keep the, the, the pita warm because that's what's going to even help your sandwich be more delicious. I do have a tortilla warmer. You do? See? You have everything in your kitchen. You're very... Look! Oh, and it's fancy too. This is from my favorite store here at Indian Wells. It's called Kitchen Kitchen. And I know my local Coachella Valley peeps know what I'm talking about. We're gonna have uh, Jan from Kitchen Kitchen on a show. And I'm glad I don't have to use my foil because I wanna show you guys the most unfrustrating thing in the entire world. Can you see this? My foil is defective and it keeps spinning and spinning. And look, it's coming out less and less and less and less. Let's see. Isn't that awful? It's, it's terrible. It's a nightmare. I won't it's, speak yeah. tonight. It's, yeah, I know, it's a nightmare. All right, I think the sauce is, John, the sauce is so easy schmeasy. I know, right? What else could we use this on? Oh, you, you know what it's really good on? 
um, cake. <laughs> I know that sounds really weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's really good. Like if you have pound cake or any kind of like, not chocolate, but any kind of vanilla or anything like that, or muffins, it's, it's instead of butter, it's so good. Yum, yum. Really good. Love that. All right. So are we gonna do the veggies next or the chicken next? So let's do the veggies. So um, so in, in this recipe, we're also calling for one entire cucumber that's been that's been um, peeled and cut into little pieces. And that's gonna be part of the vegetables that go into the salad. And then three quarters of a pound of cherry tomatoes. Now, people are like, three quarters of a pound? Like, we stopped weighing things at the grocery store decades ago, right? However, so as a, as a hack, as a shortcut, three quarters of a pound of tomatoes is about one basket. So if you just get one basket of cherry tomatoes from the store and wash them and cut them in half, then that's what you need. Yep, look, there's Patty with her plastic basket. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So we're combining the cucumbers and the tomatoes. And it's also calling for garlic, right? Yep. So we're putting some garlic in and some olive oil, and that's it. Oops. What are you reading? Where do we put the other half of the garlic? It's supposed to go in the sour cream. Oh. It doesn't say that. We'll fix that. We'll fix it. So then we just mix these up. We put a little salt and pepper in them and let it sit because these are going to sort of marinate deliciously. We're making those Mediterranean flavors, tomato, cucumber, and garlic to go with our chicken and our sauce. And it's going to taste great. All these different flavors together. Are we throwing in some kalamatas in those vegetables if we want? Yep. You can put, so I have my, like, do you like kalamata olives? Because I love them. I can eat them both. Yeah. You can mix them into the tomato and cucumber mixture, or you can sprinkle them on top as an, so if people in your family don't like kalamata olives, you can use them afterwards and add them on top to the people that do. Our family likes them, so um, I'm gonna, just gonna throw them in. All right. Um, and so that's ready. I'm gonna make my sauce while Patty starts to cook her chicken. Okay. All right, so I've got my chicken in my baggie. It's been marinating since, like I said, about 7.30 this morning. And this is, I like this direction, John. So we're gonna put a little more olive oil in the pan. I believe, is that right? That's right. That's right, okay. A little more olive oil. Although I put a lot of oil, olive oil on my pita. And then we're gonna just put these chicken breasts in the pan. Okay, I'm a little nervous that I'm going to get my white shirt dirty. So I knew this was a messy recipe, so I just grabbed something at Bed Bath & Beyond this weekend that I'm just going to put on right now. This is for all the Mean Girls fans out there. As you know, on Wednesdays, we wear pink. <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> now tell Scott, this is an unauthorized purchase. This was an impulse purchase. All right, so we're going to take our chicken breasts out. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. And these are going to cook really fast, these chicken yeah. breasts, because you, you they're pounded thin now, right? Yeah. So we're going to put them in, and then we're going to arrange the onions in the pan around the chicken breasts. Smell delicious. I'm only going to put one chicken breast right now in the interest of time, but a great tip in the recipe that John put is to put all the breasts you know, just single layer and then nest the onions around them so that everything cooks evenly and quickly. Yep, so I'm cooking them both. And it, it's, it only take like, I don't know, a couple minutes per side for the chicken breast to cook because they're thin. And, and then we're gonna take them out, we're gonna leave the onions to cook just a little bit longer. All right. So while that's happening, um, why don't we talk a little bit about um, well, you know, I'm going to talk about pasta sauce from last week uh, because we used, I made my own sauce 
you can buy jarred sauce. Um, but one of the most sort of underrated sauces for pasta and meatballs, since we made meatballs last week, is pesto. And pesto is the easiest thing to make. It's like ridiculously easy to make. Um, all it is is basil, olive oil, garlic, pine nuts if you want them, and Parmesan cheese. And you mix it in the blender and it turns into this delicious, bright green, beautiful, tasty paste called pesto. And I use that on pasta all the time and my kids love it. And literally you just put the pesto on a cooked pasta, stir it in, Bam. sometimes add a little extra olive oil, and then it's good to go. So with the meatballs from last week, you can make it that way instead of red sauce. Yum, I just, I made some pesto last weekend because our basil plant was so prolific. So I, I just, and I just finished it up last night with some other leftovers, some leftover orzo from a dish I made. See? Some chicken, um, some asparagus, some grilled asparagus, and the pesto be, you know, was the sauce, it was delicious. So uh, let's see, so our sauce is done. So we added, so I thought I supposed to add the garlic with the sauce, check. The spin, we're gonna do spinach as at the end, feta at the end, correct? Yes. And we've got one other ingredient to add to the onions, right? When we take the chicken out. <laughs> Which um, fits our theme of dinner is gonna be a little late tonight. The recipe also calls for a quarter cup of white wine. So you can, and if you don't wanna cook with wine, some people don't, you can use water instead. But the purpose of it is to give the um, onions a little bit of uh, moisture so that they get a little juicier because the onions are gonna go onto the sandwich, onto the gyro separately from the chicken. So I'm gonna take the chicken out of the pan, we're gonna put it on the board and slice it, and we're gonna let the onions continue to stew a little bit in some white wine or water. Okay, so this is ready to turn. So really easily that quickly, get this chicken breast cooked. Oh, it smells really good with these spices. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So I mentioned before that I'm a brand ambassador for Purdue Farms, and I get my chicken from them because I know where it's raised, I know it's been humanely raised, and it's raised by independent farmers. I've actually visited some of the farms and gotten to see the chickens, and there's a lot of weird controversy about how chickens are raised and how sometimes it's really inhumane, and we've all heard the stories and maybe even seen some pictures. And some of the major chicken farms, brands, maybe they do it that way, but Purdue does not. And I actually saw it so I can tell you exactly what I saw. It was it was totally humane and um, and they are, you know, no chickens are killed until, well, until it's time to eat them, but there is no like weird stuff along the way. Um, They're all free ranging in giant barns with plenty of fresh air and lots to eat, lots of water. And they were actually very playful and cute. So, I mean, it's weird to think about how your food is raised and how it makes its way to your table. And a lot of people just don't want to think about it. Um, and I get it. I get it. We don't have to talk about it too much. We just know that Purdue Farms raises their food humanely. And that's one of the reasons why I like to order from them. But also simply because it's just good. And you can order from PurduePharms.com and have it shipped directly to your front door. So you didn't have to search for anything in the store. So that's what I use. Maybe try it. I'm planning on it. So I think it's time to talk about wine, John. Chicken's just about done. We'll let it rest for a sec. I like that subject. Pardon me? I like that subject. I like that subject too. So we talked to Sam Sid because of course, with a Greek dish, we wanted to have some Greek wine. And uh, just want to do a shout out to Sam Sid. Her Instagram is Sam Sydney. Oh, it's Sam Sydney. Sam Sydney on Instagram. Please follow. If you like our wine pairings, this is where we get them. So Sydney was fortunate enough to go to Greece last summer. And that seems a lifetime ago. And she really enjoys Greek wine. So when I asked her what would go well with our euros, she recommended uh, a white and a red. And the white is She's behind me. A Sertico. A Sertico. It's a grape indigenous to Greece. 
And this is a great, I love this because you're like, what the heck is that? Am I going to like it? She said, if you like Albarino or Sauvignon Blanc, John Bailey, if you like yeah. Sauvignon Blanc, you will like this. It's got, it's complex, has some savory notes, but it's still bright with great citrus and similar to what you would get in a Sauvignon Blanc or an Albarino, which an Albarino is like my new favorite white varietal. And then the red, I have to refer to my phonetic pronunciation. <laughs> Ma Mavrotragano, Mavro, oh yes, I got the thumbs up. Yay, I just got like the emoji thumbs up, but in real life, Mavrotragano. And this is cool. This is also an indigenous grape to Greece. It's very full bodied, um, but she says it's usually blended. And so I said, so what kind of grapes would it be blended with? And she's like, these other Greek grapes with these really long complicated names. So it's gonna be a blend of Greek grapes. Um, but How do you spell that? Uh, well, you spell it M A V R O T R A G A N O, Mavrotragano. Mavrotragano. And what was the first one? The right uh, one? Assertico. That one's easy to remember. It's like assertive. Assertico. 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 And let me tell you, let me see how it is. So I went, so true story, I did total wine curbside pickup this morning, 10 o'clock this morning. I'm at Total Wine in Palm Desert, California, picking up my Assertico. And I just have, I got really excited because the nice man came out to my car and I'm sitting in my car and he says, oh, you don't look old enough to buy wine. And I, so we chatted for a few minutes and I was all excited. And then I drove away and I realized I have a mask and sunglasses on. He can't see me at all. I thought, what are, you, are you working for a tip? What do you want? But anyway. So, um, and then the thing about the red, it's very full body. So that's why she recommends one that's blended. And it's got great tannins and structure, dark berry notes and lot of earth tones. So that sounds delicious. But this one, ew. total wine, 1999. But if you buy six bottles, it's like 17. That, that sounds really good. Yeah, and they had another um, Assyrtico that was a lower price point. But I went for this one because I had to pay, I would have had to pay extra for the curbside pickup. I have to spend a certain amount of money to get the curbside pickup. So that's my total wine story. I'm not sure it's a plug exactly, except for the nice man who told me I looked good. So all right, my chicken's coming out and resting. And then we're going to add a little bit of this wine to the onions. Woo! Yum. And that's going to give them a little more zip. And I'm drinking water because I don't have any wine in the house. We drank it all. <laughs> That's an emergency. I know, right? You need to go. Well, I, the wine will also deliver. I didn't have time for curbside pickup. <laughs> they would deliver. <laughs> so yeah, so I use water. So today I'm I'm the teetotaler on the on the euros. All right. So are we ready to assemble? Well, we're, we, you got to let the, the onions cook a little bit more, but we're 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 getting there. All right, I guess I need a knife. So we need to we need to cut the chicken and slice it. So here's what it looks like now. It's all cooked up, and it's um, ready to be sliced. And now it looks delicious, and we can show it to you because it doesn't look disgusting like like you know raw chicken, which okay. yeah, not so pretty. So now I'm going to slice it up into thin slices and again like you know i this is a lot of chicken and so you're going to cut it into thin slices and that those you can use um this recipe will last quite some time and if you decide you don't want any more gyros the chicken tastes just delicious on a salad as well so there's a lot of things you can do with it other than make gyros but i'm going to end up with quite a bit of chicken and my family's going to eat up these gyros, so they're gonna love it. So you end up with these beautiful, delicious slices of chicken. Like that. Does that look good? It's all steamy. There it is. Doesn't that smell good? It smells amazing. It smells delicious. And the the vegetables smell great too, with the lemon and cilantro and a little garlic. Yum. Okay, are we ready to assemble? I am, I'm nervous. So I'm going to get my pita bread, I got my pita bread. I got which has been keeping warm in 
the piece of foil. And um, it's now like nice and crispy. So remember how, this is what it looked like, like uncooked. And here's what it looks like cooked. So it's all nice and golden. And I'm gonna put a few slices of chicken into the sandwich. You know, maybe two or three, depending on how big um, or how hungry you are. It's gonna look like this. Um, and and then I'm going to uh, put in some of the, sa the salad that we made with the tomato, and the cucumber, and Kalamata olives. And I'm going to put that on top. Mm, that looks good and smells good. And it's like garlicky. Mm. <laughs> I'm hungry. Can you tell? I haven't had lunch. This is going to be my lunch. I know John. John eats what we make right after we make it. I usually sh save it, and that's my husband's portion for dinner. So then I'm going to put some onions on top of that, um, and now they're nice and juicy, and they've got a little sauce. In your case, a little wine sauce, right? A little wine sauce. Yes. And um, then comes my favorite part. The sauce. <laughs> the, the the sauce, the, the, the sour cream sauce. So I'm going to put a healthy serving of the sauce, which, you know, some people like a little, I like a lot. So I've put this much. And here's one of the things to remember when you're making this sandwich. It's a sandwich and you're going to make it into a taco and you're going to have to fold it over. So you don't want to overfill it. I've almost overfilled it and we're not even done yet. Looks like you have two, Patty. Oh, of course, always. And then we're going to put some fresh spinach, baby spinach leaves that we've prepared and set aside for this purpose. So now it's starting to look like a little salad. With the sauce, the chicken, the tomato, the cucumbers, the kalamata olives, um, the onions, and, and um, the uh, spinach. And it would not really be a Greek dish, a proper Greek dish, without feta. So feta cheese is one of those cheeses that I think is, is underappreciated. And um, feta is like, um, it's pungent, but it's so delicious in its kind of dry, salty way. And it's, you know, Greek, um, Greece is famous for its feta. I really love feta, tomatoes, and basil mixed into scrambled eggs in the morning. So there's a lot of ways to use feta other than just as a garnish like this, but it does taste really, really delicious on a sandwich. So I'm gonna put some feta on top of this sandwich and um, that's gonna add a little tart. So I've got lots of flavors going. We got the spices, we've got the tart, we've got the lemon, the garlic, the onion, the tomato, all of these things mixed together make this really beautiful and delicious feta and chicken and sauce and spinach and tomato and cucumber and onion and lemon. Yeah. looks oh, amazing and looks delicious yep and so delicious. now i want you to take a bite it's cut kind of, i'm not going to take a bite yet i'm going to because it'll get all over me but i am going to tell you that i cannot wait to take a bite it's kind of like having a greek salad on a piece of bread mhm mm right mm. yum and our friend Christina is having a Greek salad right now. So Christina, <laughs> awesome. all you need, Christina, all you need is, is some, some bread and you're good to go. You, you, just, you just need a little pita. So there you go. Super easy and, um, and very inexpensive and spreads out over a long time. You have leftovers that you can use and make and eat again and again. So I've got quite a bit of chicken left over, which is great because my family will gobble it up. And that's it. So, Patty, what's going on next week? Well, next week, apparently John has a, a job. And apparently he has to work on Wednesday, Wednesday next Wednesday at 1 o'clock. So we're going to have a bye. That's also my anniversary. So I was really looking forward to cooking something and then not having to cook anything for dinner. But we're going to take, yay, I'm so glad. How do you say your name, Marcia? Marcia. Marcia. Oh, Joan. It is amazing, Joan. Shout out to Joan. Joan's my 89-year-old Jazzercise customer who had a knee replacement and was out walking around one week later. Wow. So, 
It is amazing, Joan. Um, so yeah, so next week, we're not going to be coming at you live. So it's a great opportunity to go back to a favorite episode. Maybe you missed one. Um, please. So our dinners, Facebook and Instagram are live and active. And we'd love for you to go on, comment, share, like, and let us know if there's a dish that you'd like us to make, or if you have any questions, or if you have any suggestions, or if you have an opinion about dried herb versus fresh, anything, we'd love to hear from you. And if you do make our dishes, please take a picture and share it with us. We'd love to post it. Um, and so we will see you in two weeks from today. And if you want to um, download this recipe or any of the others from the show, go to two dads with baggage.com right here, two dads with baggage.com. And all the recipes are there from the show. The videos are there if you want to watch along. Um, and we would love your support in sharing this with others who might be interested. So thanks very much for tuning in to dinner's going to be a little late tonight for this week's episode. And we'll see you in two weeks. So two, two weeks. weeks from today, Wednesday at one o'clock. Two weeks. See you in two weeks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.